something, you do it. This is submission. And when you don't do it, you shouldn't be surprised when things don't go right. <laughs> you know, it's just an oxymoron. Hey, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm not going to do right. But then when something bad happened, I'll go, oh, Allah, why you do this to oh, yeah, me? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, why is this happening? I mean, come on, you know. Yeah. Common sense. The people keep doing same mistakes <laughs> and expect different results. <laughs> you know, that's a sign of what? <laughs> Insanity. Oh. <laughs> you know, that's what we say. You know, you keep doing the same thing and you expect different results. No, it doesn't work like that. So, uh, okay. So I understand that you were in Africa at that time. Yes. How, how soon you informed your family back in the States and what was their reactions? Well, uh, I wrote a letter to my mother and I, I told her that I had become a Muslim. Of course, she was not happy. She was disappointed. She told me she was disappointed. My father, he was indifferent, you know, because at the time he wasn't really, uh, you know, a super religious person. He, you know, my father was, uh, was a good man and everything, but he didn't wear his religion on his uh, shoulder like my mother did. My mother was very super religious. She was... Uh, wow. Uh, you know, very much encouraging all her children to believe in God. So I believe strongly in God mm -hmm. because of my mother. And I believe in uh, all the golden rules of doing the right thing, you mm -hmm. know, treating your parents well. But my mother, you know, uh, she had been a Christian. This is what she believed in. So uh, she was not happy. So when I returned to the United States and, uh, my mother saw that I, I was different, you know, mm -hmm. I was wearing different clothes, I was talking different things. Uh, I was very uh, fired up as a Muslim. I <laughs> wanted to give dawah to everyone. I wanted everyone to become Muslim in my family. So I would get into these heated debates oh. and arguments with my mother, my father, my sisters, my brothers. And uh, it showed me that that's not the way. Exactly. You know, it was counterproductive. Yes. And even today, none of my siblings are Muslim. My mother and father are deceased. Neither one of them accepted Islam before they deceased. So, you know, it's Allah who brings people to Islam and make you Muslim. Only Allah, because I went to Africa just really despising, detesting what I thought was this, the, the Sunni Islam. I wanted this nation of Islam. And look what happened. The very thing that I... <laughs> thought I detested and I didn't like, I became. And that was 30, over 30 years ago. So, so it's no, you know, so. it was for real. Allah says, la tahdi man ahbabt. You, you, you do not give guidance to whom you love. Allah uh, give it to whom Allah you wish. Yeah, because yeah, that's, that's it. Subhanallah. Uh, what was the reaction of, of Muslims around you uh, after you you're taking your shahada? When I took my shahada in Africa, I noticed a difference in the attitude towards me by the people of the village. Before they were cordial, they were nice to me, don't get me wrong, but when I took my shahada, it was like constantly giving me food, everything, people smiling at me. And uh, you know, it, it changed to like, I felt at home. I really felt <laughs> you like- You became part hey, of the family. I'm part of the family Mashallah. now, you know. <laughs> And I could definitely feel the difference. Subhanallah. Uh, that's very interesting and very encouraging yes. compared to, to other stories we are hearing here from other brothers and sisters whom, whom experience was not as, as good and, and positive. Yeah. Uh, dear viewers, we will continue with the uh, positive uh, reactions of Muslims around uh, our brother Sidi Mukhtar after this break. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> Dear viewers, welcome back. We are still joining our brother Sidi Mukhtar and his journey to Islam. So, Mukhtar, uh, as, as we were saying that, uh, يعني, mashallah, you had a, a positive experience with the uh, reactions of people around you that, uh, with, the, with the grace of Allah, uh, supported your, your transition from 
what you had before to Islam. Uh, some, some other guests didn't have uh, that uh, fortunate of uh, this positive reaction around them, subhanAllah. Uh, and uh, what was the first worship that you, was, uh, you were practicing right after uh, taking your shahada? Well, the first uh, worship, of course, was uh, Salah. But before that, I was, uh, <clears throat> when I uh, professed that I wanted to uh, take my shahada and become a Muslim, you know, I was uh, taught to take a ghusl, a bath, and shave my head. And, uh, the Completely? E yeah, because <laughs> I had these... Uh, Oh, okay. Stylish. Yeah, like Bob Marley. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not long ones. I was just beginning to grow some uh, locks. And uh, it just my hair was plaited. So I guess the people in the village said, no, we need to cut this off. So uh, they asked me to shave my head. They gave me a razor and uh, gave me a small tagir, a kufi. I uh -huh. put it on my head and a white jalabir, a white dish dash. And uh, they called me to the masjid. And when I got to the masjid, all the men in the village were there, and uh, they were so happy. And uh, I took my shahada, and the first thing they taught me how to make uh, my first uh, salat. And I, I followed them. I didn't know what, what to say, of course. I hadn't learned fatiha or anything at yeah, the time. Yeah, normal. And, uh, <clears throat> and that was the first, first thing. And uh, not too long after that, Ramadan uh, began. And my first Ramadan, I had just become Muslim, not long before that. So uh, I was fortunate to uh, experience Ramadan with my with, with uh, a my, Muslim community with a mus Muslim community for the first time, and that was, you know, uh, uh, incredible. Mashallah. Experience. Uh, what are your gains and and losses uh, after being becoming well, Muslim? Well, my gains are, you know. Uh, truly uh, a peace of mind and a, 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 a understanding of all the things that I was uh, contemplating and, and meditating, meditating and thinking about religion and God. To me, the puzzle had come together. I felt that I, I now really understood who was God, my relationship with God, uh, 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 with the law. So, I gain a peace of mind, a peace, mm -hmm. the, and, a, and a knowledge of, uh, you know, uh, who the true, what the truth was, and who the true God. And this was my, you know, my opinion. I have found the true religion. This is what I felt. My loss was all my, uh, all, all my uh, bad habits and anger and and all the things that I felt that were uh, leading me to the fire. Because I was involved in, in all the, uh, the different vices because that's the way society that I come from. You know, people, uh, it, was, it was nothing. So I gave up all of that. Somehow. You know, smoking, drinking, womanizing, you name it. When I became a Muslim, I easily gave it up. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So, so this, this is our next question. It's a comparison between your, your life before and after. If, if you can, if you, can, if you have a comparison, how do you compare it? Well, my life before, like I said, was, <clears throat> uh, you know, actually I had a good foundation. My parents taught me uh, to be a good person. Don't get me wrong. My mother and father, I grew up in an uh, <coughs> a agrarian society. I grew up on a farm. And my, my, my father and my grandmother taught me how to survive on the land, how to, how to farm, how to hunt, uh, and how to live off the land. And I'm my sure. father taught me the principles of being honest, doing a good job, whatever you do, my father would say, do your best. If you do a job, do your best, and always pay your debts and treat people uh, with kindness. I mean, that's Islam. I'm sure. I'm sure. So I had that foundation, but my society corrupted me. You know, um, I knew the truth, but once I got out in society, you know, of course, you know, I wanted to party and have a good time and experience all the different uh, things in society. So what you're saying? So my life before, 
I was like a ship with no rudder. I was lost. just bouncing around, lost, yeah. lost. Yeah. I, at one time, I wanted to be a. Uh, I was looking into Hinduism. Oh, the so all uh, religions uh, of communism, the socialism. Yeah, you know, Pan Africanism. All these isms. Wow, very interesting. Uh, so what you're saying is that you are back to the natural life that you started with, with your family, but with the concept, with the guidance of Allah and Islam, Subhanallah. Exactly. The other contrast, like you just said, was that unlike before, now I felt I had a captain on the ship. Oh. I had a guidebook. I knew where I was going. I was not on a voyage all just anywhere. Wow. I knew my direction. It was to Allah, to the afterlife, to Jannah. So with guidance. SubhanAllah. You know, so Subhanallah. Guidance is a blessing that Allah is giving to whom he wish. Uh, we thank you very much, our brother uh, Sidi Mukhtar, for joining us tonight. This is very interesting uh, a journey that you had between two continents from United States to Americas to Africa and back to America, all searching for knowledge and for the truth. Uh, we thank you very much for your time and for joining us tonight. We pray to Allah to to give you uh, what you wish for. Uh, we thank you all, dear viewers, for joining us tonight. Sallu ala nabi, 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 raditu. بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا رضيت بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سلم نبيا ورسولا رضيت بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا